Friends, welcome again to my YouTube channel today where I share some great ideas. Uh, the last video I showed you that was a great idea was how to build this uh, chuck for turning off center. So today we're going to test it out, see if it actually works. Anyway, um, we're probably just going to make a, a simple offset uh, uh, base. I have a couple of them here that I practiced on and they're fun, easy, quick, easy to build. I suggest you start with that first rather than something like this. <laughs> and the first one I did is I did something like this. It was a little simpler than this and this one <clears throat> is a little fancier. I will show you in another video sometime how to actually do one of these. I want to do another one with a little better design. But anyway, it, it's, it's heart thumping the first thing you make like this. So, start with something simple. <clears throat> well, it's just, this will just be basic lathe work, but I had to come up with a great idea, and I mentioned that in my video on building this, on a good idea for Eck, <clears throat> for indexing. Now, on this one, I just... Uh, I mentioned that before, I just used uh, pencil marks and stuff like that. Uh, and that'll work, it actually worked for me, but I want to make something a little better because this has got to be the super duper, the best uh, offset chuck that you can actually make better than you can buy because you can't even buy one. Anyway, when we did this originally here, I suggested, and I thought it was a good idea then, is to make a cut all the way across while well, you had it set up exactly on zero. That way you won't lose that reference point. So now we want reference points that won't disappear or be goofy like those pencil marks for when we do the offset because we're going to turn this one way or the other way when you start and to make that fancy project you have to do it one way one time and then you have to turn it the opposite direction the next time so I want to put some permanent indexing marks on there and when I had it apart and I was turning I thought hey I could do that that would work super so I'm going to show you what I'm doing here so on this piece here from the center, on each side, I've made indexing marks. They're just out of pencil, and I put them on there uh, with a, a, a some sort of flexible rule, okay? This is just a cheap old one from the dollar store that you can get. It usually has cork on the bottom. Back there, you can use it on a desk. But they turn, they, it's a good rule. And, uh, and you use that. You don't want to put uh, measure a quarter and then measure another quarter and then another quarter or whatever units you're using because then you're compounding your error. So with this you, you, can, you can bend it and I just picked a number. I picked six. Okay. And I'm having a hard time holding that up there six and then uh, marked them quarter inch spaces each side of six there that way when you when you get to the end you're exactly what you did I went to one and three quarters now all we're going to do now is cut permanent marks into this piece and I think I'm going to rather than do it on the bandsaw where you have to work uh, you're working on the back side and your and your <clears throat> mark is on the other side and you can't see it so I'm going to put it in a, a vise here and use a handsaw where I can get right at it. You can use some sort of fine tooth handsaw uh, <clears throat> or a hacksaw or something like that. Something that makes a nice thin kerf there and you take a little time to do it well. And uh, I'll do that, put it together and show you how, how they work. Now this piece here uh, with the groove in there, that good goes all the way across, but what I'm going to do 
is cut this just on this side to cut it down a little bit because when we turn that you'll see it it, it it goes off of the surface so I'll go ahead and cut those slots in there and bring it back show you and then we're ready to roll or start turning whatever you want to say <laughs> okay I cut those little slots with the hacksaw there and uh, I'll see show you where is this okay there we go okay there's my marks and uh, and turn it this way that's inch and three quarters oh I could have put some more in there so if I want to go more I can put some more I went to one and three quarters I never thought to check to see how many I actually could use okay and I can go this way well when you go off center if we look at the end here the it doesn't the the mark that on the back plate is lower than the front one but with that cut that I made at an angle on that for the center line there cut it down deeper then you can you can line it right up in there trying to get a good shot here okay and if I go further down you know then it would be down there but we'll try one and three quarter offset that's probably all my poor lathe will handle it can get flopping around there pretty fast there so we'll try the maximum that I've put out here on this project here so anyway I'll get this mounted on the lathe and uh, get some wood and then we'll show you how it works <coughs> well today we're going to try that chuck out I think I got most things done on the uh, preparation for using it there and if you watch that video some segments are out of place there so I'm going to try to edit it tonight uh, anyway I'm not sure what the computer did after I went through every one and put them in order they put them in when I downloaded it on the movie maker that some of them were out of order and I guess it didn't like me straightening it out so anyway I'm gonna to have to have a word with it tonight but anyway yeah, so uh, Chuck's ready to go. I think I got myself a piece of wood here. Um, couldn't find a piece in the shop for what I wanted to do, so I went outside and found a timber and got my chainsaw going, hacked off a piece, and it's so it's not real dry. So what I'm going to make today, I was going to show you <clears throat> just a simple project. Uh, as an offset vase but then I decided well I would show you how to do a do this bird since I did a bird project before and people have watched that and, uh, and then I saw the same person that uh, inspired me here Wanaki Vincent he uh, posted a duck <laughs> so I'm gonna try a duck I don't know how it's gonna turn out I don't know if it'll quack or not but anyway this wood's not really dry so it may crack or quack yeah so I'll have a quacking cracking duck <laughs> anyway it'll we're gonna try it out the piece is quite big and uh, so anyway uh, <clears throat> when you put something square on the lathe you get those sharp quarters that keep coming around and hitting your tool and bangity clangity crash and uh, I've decided I've often cut the cut the corners off cut the corners off there here's a, a corner I cut off here yeah so anyway uh, and uh, how I do that uh, usually is I have this block of wood with a v-slot in it and a screw in the end and then I just take my uh, <coughs> square stock and lay it in there and uh, run it through the bandsaw yeah I cut the uh, corner off I cut this off with a chainsaw off this piece of six foot piece I had there <laughs> and then I brought it in I thought I'd shape it up on cut the end off on the bandsaw and I started cutting and broke the bandsaw right in half uh, yeah so I had to take it apart and put a new blade on it the blades that I use I uh, I, uh, I salvage from the high school and then I take them cut them to the length I need 
and then I weld them back together and or, or braise them. And if you look back in my videos, you'll find that process. And then I sharpen them. A sharpened blade is much cuts much better than a new blade out of the box. Some people where I don't even use a new blade, they sharpen it before they use it. But anyway, yeah, and uh, I was looking for where I joined it uh, by brazing, and uh, it didn't break on the on my joint. It breaked, it broke on the, on just the straight bar metal there. That blade needed replacing anyway. I had touched it with a screw or something, and it wasn't cutting straight. So anyway, I put a heavy duty blade on and cut the ends off here. So. Anyway, I'll cut the other four corners, mount it on the lathe, and uh, I will back to you in a few minutes here. <clears throat> okay, I got the corners cut off, but one thing I was going to mention here, I often refer to some things along the way. Uh, I don't know how you guys put the center in here uh, for your uh, tailstock there, and, uh, but I use these uh, little bits here. You get them for metal work on the metal lathe. You can buy them at not, probably anywhere that sells parts. Uh, Harbor Freight would be a good one because <laughs> and they'd be cheap. And of course, Princess Auto maybe, probably not. Anyway, uh, that's what. Uh, and they come in different sizes. This one here, because I've got a bigger piece of wood, I've used a bigger one. Anyway, yeah. So do that and. Uh, yeah, I drilled this on center basically, and I was just wondering, I don't know because I don't have any experience, if you're doing something off center, it, it might be good to put the center off center too, you know, because you're going to be adjusting it after, but I'm too scared to do that, so I'm just going to do it straight on center. Anyway, I'll mount this on the lathe and then uh, we'll tell you what I'm going to do next. Okay, I've got it mounted and uh, rounded out. With those corners uh, taken off, it certainly makes it a lot easier. And uh, this end is going to have the tenon that fits in that hole there. So, uh, and also, I'll point out at this time, the distance from the this center up to the heavier washer is two inches. So the maximum diameter this can be right here is four inches. Uh, so you can still uh, so it'll clear this washer and you can sw swing the thing back and forth there. And uh, so I'm going to bring this down, I use a parting tool here, bring that down and, and get it fitted. Now, I, uh, you can measure it of course with the uh, calipers and that's worked good. But uh, I made up this little tool a few minutes ago uh, to check it uh, while well, you have this is the same drill I used to put the hole in the center of the uh, s center of the chuck there. So uh, I could use it for fit if I want it exact or I don't want it to get any smaller than this. And just for a rough check here, I used half a circle. So I can just put that on the, when I'm laying it down, I can check it. I can check it with uh, the half circle on here without having to take anything off the lathe or anything like that. And I can get it pretty close. And once you do it a few times, it'd probably be quite quick and easy. But anyway, I don't want to goof up this piece, but it's long enough I could <laughs> do another. Like if I goofed it up, I could cut another one. Anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, use the parting tool and start lathing that down. Okay, here we got the chuck mounted on here. We got their lines lined up here, so it's basically on center. And uh, we've got it tightened up. We've got still got a little crack here. Uh, using this little uh, tool here, I use that exclusively to get the, the tenon the right size. And uh, I use the uh, parting tool to, you don't, so it leaves a rough rough surface right at the bottom there. You, the rougher rougher is better. It just grips it grips better. Don't just try to sand that down to the right size or anything like that. And uh, so that was good. I never tried it in this hole, but I just used this part here until it just about slid over, and uh, then it uh, it worked out real well. I've got this pushed all the way to the to the surface here. There's no crack in here that'll 
uh, stabilize this a piece later when we're using the uh, off-center part of it. Uh, these bolts here, I purposely put them so the nut would be on the top here, so you got you can tighten them, tighten them at the top there. The only trouble is this one's backwards. <laughs> well, I did it at the back. I guess we should put one one way. Yeah, I guess. Well, I was only half right. <laughs> I thought of these two, but I never thought of these two when they come around the other side. So I can take these out right here and turn them the opposite way. <laughs> anyway, put one in one way and one the other way and you got her built. Anyway, we kind of got to decide what we're going to do with this wood here. And I've never done this, so I'm not quite sure. So I don't want to lay too close to here. So I'm going to put my base. This will be the base area here. And then my duct, let's say it starts here, and I don't know how much we need for a body, but let's say up to here. And the neck will be short, and the head up here, how's that? So we can put those lines on there. And I'll have to uh, modify that as I go along because I'm not quite certain how to do this. But anyway, we'll keep figuring it out. Okay, so I'm going to use a parting tool, I think, and kind of make some of these lines. This body here. I usually do the top first and then work towards the bottom. But this is, we know this is part's going to be round here. And this is going to be on center here, this area here, and that'll be done, finished later after I get this whole top done. And this is going to curve around uh, uh, sort of like that. Your duck will have a bottom like that, and then hopefully you have a head that goes up here with a head, and your bottom will come around here <laughs> something like this anyway I don't know anyway sometimes you just have to fly at it you have something in your mind and just work on it so I'm going to lay this part here well this is on center because this part up here this whole section from here to here is going to be all off center that'll be all off center so Let's kind of get the bottom of the body shaped and a little bit here uh, where the pedestal will be. Yeah, well, anyway, I'll try it out and uh, get back to you here pretty quick. Okay, I've done a little bit of shaping here. This is going to be the base. It'll probably be a lot smaller. This will be the pedestal. and It'll probably come down to about a, a one inch there. I shaped a little bit of the body here, uh, just to put a little curve in it here, and uh, just to give it an idea as we work on the top here that's going to be off center. Um, yeah, so we just have to work away at it and see how it goes. And then later I'll come back, put the chuck on center, and uh, shape the bottom of my body right. Uh, but we want to get the, a bunch of this top off center wood off first keeping this quite strong so anyway I'll just keep working here and show you as I go along hopefully this uh, will turn into a duck if it doesn't turn into a duck well you won't see it because <laughs> I won't post it but if I can get it done this time that's great well I think I'm living dangerously here I, I uh, put my offset here the full amount which is a huge amount but I've got a big piece of wood here I was looking at the end I thought I had enough room for a head on that side but it might be a little bit too much so I might swing it the other way and make it less here I've had to put my lathe on the slowest speed here and you can see it uh, wood's really flopping around there there's something falling off the lathe, I guess. <laughs> there goes my tool. You 
Yeah, so anyway, I'm considering putting that uh, a little less offset there. Okay, I t turned this the opposite way and put it about a quarter inch past what I the cuts I already made on there. So that would be two inches on this here, which only gives it uh, less on the, on on the actual thing there. But you can see the difference between here and here. So you've got a uh, probably a four inch offset there. So anyway. So maybe these marks are okay. So anyway, we'll turn it on here. Everything's flopping around. You have to have a pretty good heavy lathe to do something this big. And uh, yeah, on uh, putting this here, I put the offset on here and then brought my tail stock up so the point was hitting the uh, wood and that marked it and uh, marked it and then took the tail back tail stock back and then use that center bit there and made a fairly deep deep uh, uh, indent there so anyway I'm going to see if I can get this some of this wood turned off which will be the top of the duck and uh, it'll run a lot smoother I had to put my lathe on the slowest speed I've just got a homemade lathe here with a, a set of step pulleys so I don't have a lot of uh, leeway on speed there, but uh, I can't go any now. Okay, I've made a few cuts on here bringing this down here and uh, <laughs> I hate to see you watch me lay the nut, but I'm just going to put it on here and take a few cuts here because I imagine you want to see that flopping around there and actually working. You got to be very careful to ride the bevel and start out slow just don't jam your tool in there you can see where it when it uh, comes around and where you got to start from so let's give it a shot here Okay, there's a big hunk taken out of there. Anyway, um, we'll just have to keep working at it here, I guess, till I can get this turned down. This is going to have to come in fairly steep here because your back of your duck is, is uh, the body sits in the water. Anyway. Okay, well, I'm just going to work on it a little more here. Okay, I think I've got the bottom, the back of the duck done here, so I'm going to start working on the head part here. And uh, we'll see how it goes. One thing that's important here is uh, you don't turn, Let's see if I can get a little closer here. In this end here, you don't want to turn this center off because we're going to need that when we bring this back on center and then I'm going to be lathing the body here and shaping it up so it looks half duck-like. Hopefully this thing will quack yet. 
And um, yeah, and I've turned the speed up twice uh, because I've got a bunch of that off and it's actually going quite quickly now. And that, that would make it a little easier to lay. Anyway, I'll just, I'm going to bring this up and try to make a, a dome-shaped head here, still keeping enough wood here uh, for support. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to lay this down to a neck and then make a, a head in this area here, leaving the wood out here, but not bringing it down uh, too far. Uh, so I have enough strength through here, and then I can cut the top of the head off and shape it there. So hopefully that'll work out for me. Uh, I've turned the speed up now that I got a lot of that volume of wood out there on a slower speed, and uh, it'll make it a little easier for turning. So this lathe's pretty heavy, and uh, it's not shaking too bad. Nothing's falling off. <laughs> you just want to stay right away from that area with your hands, arms, whatever there, because that'll, that'll really give you a whack. Well, this is the top part of my duck. At least uh, it's mostly done. Still not quite certain. Probably the head here will have to get a little bit smaller um, in that. It's going to be a challenge sanding that. But really, when you get to this stage, if you got it all complete, you really should sand it. I might do a little bit on there. But I'm thinking of uh, putting it back on center and uh, shaping this bottom section a little bit and see if I can get it more duck shaped so it'll actually quack. Right now it doesn't look like it'll quack at all. Anyway, I've got one little quack here though, but it's on the wrong place. The quack's supposed to be over there. Okay, well, uh, that's what it looks like and I'll turn it on here. You can see it's spinning there. Okay, I've turned it uh, back to center. Remember I said that, that you want to make sure you have that mark put on there because there's times when you'll have to go back to center. So this is what it looks like. Running fairly smoothly because I've got a lot of material uh, off. And, uh, and this large part here is on center, so it makes a huge difference. <laughs> So how do you sand this beast? Well, you got to be very careful. One way I'd, I've been doing it is using a, a long piece of uh, sandpaper from uh, like a belt sander. I get a whole bunch of cut off belt sander pieces from a company and uh, all different grits and stuff. So that works good. but. So you want to keep your hands clear, so I'll just... Well then you have this area out here which is really hard and to do that I've been using a, a drill Uh, with a sanding disc on it, and that helps quite a bit. And then, of course, you can do this with by hand too, if you've got spots that need some attention in this area here. Uh, do it like that. And then uh, finish off with a turning. 
But this is the most, uh, the hardest part to sand. Uh, I've got to shape this head a little bit, and then I've got to go back and finish up the bottom here too. But that'll be, it'll be turning uh, from the center there, and that'll be easier sanding too. But I've just got to build this head up a little bit and sand it, and then switch it back to the bottom. Maybe this thing will crack, quack yet. I don't know. But I've got some cracks, so I uh, had a tool catch, and uh, yeah, so I've got a couple bangs and quacks and things like that. But we'll try to get it to a point where it even looks like a quacker. Okay, sanding the, the, the bottom is a lot easier because it's not out to kill you so I can use uh, still using a long uh, type piece of thing well sandpaper will help and um, yeah so you can see how it, how it goes here see that end how it's all whipping around there a lot safer <laughs> so anyway we're gonna have to make a quacker for this this duck here to next day anyway I'll just go ahead and finish sanding this up and uh, tomorrow we'll make a quacker for it I guess and I'll start to get it posted so by Friday I should have this ready to go on the internet well, I think I got my beast uh, finished, basically. Uh, fine sanded it to 280. Uh, yeah, I learned a few things, I guess, uh, doing this. Uh, this was a piece of wood that was outside, so it uh, shrank overnight, and it wasn't tight in the head there. And even the day before, I noticed I had to tighten those uh, bolts up so there was no crack, and it had slipped a bit when I was working on it. You could see it uh, had uh, slipped because it was kind of burnt a little bit in there. So anyway, to fix that, I took a piece of uh, some electrical tape this morning, took it out, wrapped a, a little bit around that, and uh, then it was super tight. And... Uh, yeah, so this piece of wood would uh, is old, so I hope it doesn't quack. But if it's a duck, it quacks. That's just fine, I guess. Another thing I learned, <laughs> don't leave your cell phone in your pocket. When you're lathing this stuff, you get chips in there. And <laughs> it plugged up the, the charging thing. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get it in. I had to take a needle and poke it and poke it and try to clean it out. It's still not perfect, but at least it's charging. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to make the, the bill, I guess. It's not a beak on a duck. It's a bill that goes quack. So I'll do that next. 
Okay, here's my duck. Okay. Yeah, so you need a beak. Well, it's not a beak, it's a bill. And it goes quack. Yeah, so let's make a quacker. Um, yeah, I made this one up first time. It's almost more difficult than making the duck. But anyway, um, what I've got here is uh, a piece of uh, wood in the lathe there. And I laid it down a bit. And I'll lay a little bit more and then show you what I did. Uh, see if I can make this one a little better. The first step I did was to uh, lay this section down, as you can see on here. Just a little stub point there so you can uh, poke it into a little hole in the front of the your head, of your duck. So, now I'm going to lay this down, but on a slight taper. So, um, you can see on here, so because I want to have the beak open, I think it look a little better with the beak open and closed. Okay, there it's basically shaped. Uh, it's going to have to be shaped more shaping after, but uh, make it bigger at this end so you can get the beak to to open. Anyway, now I'm going to have to cut this off and then we'll have to cut, cut the area where it's going to be open there. And I make some reference lines, one straight, straight in the center and cut that out first, possibly, and then some other ones that's curved showing that the beak is open. So I did it on a little bandsaw. You may have different method to cut out that. And then we have to sand it and shape it so it's more oval and round. So which way I'll go cut that out right now. Okay, there's the cutout. And now we're going to try to make it oval. Going to sand some off the top and shape the ends so they're a little bit round there. And uh, yeah, it's just a matter of fiddling with it. It's kind of the most delicate, hardest part of making this thing. Well, that's because I forgot how hard it was to make the body. <laughs> I think I could. Anyway, we'll I'll work on it and see what this one looks like. Okay, here's the uh, my different examples of my experience using the off-center chuck and I've got uh, the uh, little decorative box type thing that was that was interesting to make and of course the uh, the uh, offset uh, vases these are easy to make I'd probably make some more of those for gifts or something and of course my big old tall crane there that was a real challenge and my and this video here uh, features the the duck project so and uh, so that's uh, that's kind of my wood turning off center examples that I've done here and uh, my chuck here seemed to work fairly well the new one that I did on on uh, for that last video, I used the oak material. I'm not sure if that's the best or not. If I was going to do it again, I would use a like a real hard maple. I think that's a denser wood and it would stay flat better. Anyway, uh, the only thing I need here is these uh, uh, nuts here, um, acorn nuts. So they're dome. But next week I'll take a trip down to Home Depot. It's 300 miles away and and get some of those, so that'll work out well. Uh, the beak turned out not too bad. Too bad. I laid the tapered, cut the inside, then ovaled it out a little bit there just to make it look a little bit more realistic. It's made out of yellow cedar. Of course, the, the duckbill is usually yellowish color. 
So yellow cedar would be a good choice, but not too many people have yellow cedar, but you have other woods that would work very well too. So anyway, I encourage you to uh, build a one, uh, off center chuck. It's uh, quite easy to build. And it's just that the video that I made is quite long, but covers all the bases. And then it somehow when it was being recorded, it didn't get the right sequence, but it's all there. I would have to, I tried to edit it, but I would have to do a complete, uh, have to completely go back and see if I can and sort it out a little better than what it is. When I downloaded it from the camera, for some reason, it didn't come, go from the beginning to the end either. It, it switched it, and then I was worked to switch it back, and for some reason, it's still wonky. Anyway, so this kind of will conclude a lot of my uh, YouTube videos for the time being. Uh, I'll be doing, have to work on the motorcycle and gardens and summer pro summer things here got to put a house roof on my house and uh, yeah there's a lot of work to do this summer so i won't be playing too much on the wood lane but i'll be torquing down the road on the motorcycle so <laughs> you, you might see me go whizzing by yet anyway thanks for watching my videos and the interest that i've that you've mentioned in viewing them so we'll sign off for today.